With the new version of DaVinci Resolve out, let's discuss about upgrade in a bit more general terms in this tutorial. Sometimes I see people who delay upgrades for a very long time who don't want to upgrade unless absolutely necessary. Other people jump on every better release like the second it's coming out. Um, both approaches may not be always the right approach. So I want to give you my take on this. I tell you some precautions I take before upgrading what I do. Um, I tell you my take on better releases when they are useful, when not, and when I, how I decide when to actually upgrade for productive use. So I will not insult your computer skills by showing you how to download DaVinci Resolve and how to uh, double click on the setup file. So I'm sure you can figure that out, but for the rest, let's have a look. For me, whenever I update, and that doesn't matter if it's a major or minor release, I take it as an opportunity to do a quick system check. These days, a lot of updates happen automatically. Nonetheless, I do a quick check if Windows update is if I'm on the latest stable release of Windows. You may do the same for Mac or for uh, Linux. You have the supported versions from Blackmagic Design, of course. Um, I do a quick check if drivers are up to date, especially the GPU driver. Um, in case you have NVIDIA, they have a game ready driver and a studio driver. Both should work, um, but I think the idea is that with the studio driver, um, new updates and so on are a bit more timed and aligned with the release of major creative applications like Adobe and Resolve and uh, so on. So I go with this one. Then I always do a backup of my DaVinci Resolve database. That's super simple, so I think there's no excuse to not doing it before upgrading. Let me very quickly show you. So in your Resolve uh, project manager, you have here the sidebar on the side uh, where you have your databases. Right now I just have one, the local database. And for each database, you can here click on backup, put it to a file, and later in case you need to go back, uh, you can of course restore with the button next to it. Um, super simple, takes two, three minutes maximum and you are sure that you can go back to the position before your upgrade. For major releases, this is absolutely crucial. So when we went from Resolve 14 to 15, 15 to 16, now 16 to 17, the database got upgraded and it is impossible to take the newer ba database back into an older version. Um, this does not happen with minor release updates typically. Uh, nonetheless, after the upgrade, you are doing some testing and so on. And in case something breaks, whether it's due to Resolve or due to you or whatever, um, I think it's just an additional safety net to know that you have a database backup. Of course, even if you're not upgrading, database backups are great, but you know, now even more than otherwise. That's pretty much it for me when I upgrade. Sometimes you see uh, guides who say you should also up backup stuff like um, power grades and fusion macros and that kind of stuff. Um, from a general backup idea that is important to know that there are things which are not part of the Resolve database. Um, however, these things I've never seen that they get impacted by upgrades. I mean, of course, if you, if you wipe your machine and do a complete fresh new install, uh, that's a different topic. But those elements should not get impacted by a simple upgrade process. Okay, so much for what I do now, more the question, when do I do it and do I go for better versions? Uh, first, regarding better versions, quick reminder, what are better versions? So better versions are releases that contain the intended functionality of the software, like a complete uh, set of functionality, but which are either known to have bugs or anticipated to have some bugs. Now I have done a bit of uh, software development and testing myself. So during development, what do you do? You have uh, new builds all the time, like overnight, maybe every night or so, uh, the software gets compiled again and developers uh, work on all kinds of areas and try individual functionality. And you may be doing individual testing of certain functionalities which need to work for that test, but other things are maybe not ready yet. So that's like an alpha stage. Um, when everything is in principle ready, you are in a better stage and some companies decide to release the beta as a public beta to the general public. Um, pre presumably they have also done some internal beta testing first, but um, the idea is still that we are in a testing scenario 
generally speaking. Um, the idea is that you can showcase features uh, early, that people can play with them, can test them, can demo them, can maybe do training on them. Um, but you anticipate that there are still some things that need to be fixed, but you want the user feedback, you want the uh, publicity, you want, uh, you know, you want to get people excited about it, and, and that's why uh, you release it. Um, and different companies have different philosophies how long these beta phases can go and how stable it needs to be before uh, you have your final release. But the idea then is, of course, that at some point you have a final release which is safe for productive use. Now, how does Black Magic Design uh, do it with the beta phase? Um, obviously, I can't say anything definite here except from my own experience. My personal experience so far was that the early stages of the beta release, like the first couple of weeks, I always had some uh, things which would have prevented me from using it really efficiently. It was great to see, but there were some really some things that really needed to be fixed for me in order to use the software properly. Um, towards the later stages, and uh, it's anybody guess how long each beta phase may be, um, but after the first one, two rounds of bug fixing, uh, I was able to use them. I was doing uh, tutorials, trainings, and so on with beta releases. Um, and my general recommendation would be early beta phase, like immediate release, only if you want to test, only for playing, and so on. Um, at the later stages, see if there's really a major functionality uh, which you need and which gives you a major benefit which may outweigh the risk of beta testing. Now, some people say in production environment, never ever use beta versions. Um, I think that's also, it's, it's a bit of an extreme approach. I would say if there is something that you absolutely need, that you really need, you do very thorough testing, your testing goes well, uh, you, you see that you, you have loaded a project, you have done all your normal tasks, you see that works well for you, uh, and you have a, a clear benefit which will benefit your production, then I think it's okay to um, upgrade even if it's not yet called final release. Um, but if there's no major benefit for you and you can check the feature list, right, um, uh, just because it's f new and fancy and has a new number doesn't mean that you will work more productively. For me, for example, in the past uh, when the multicam feature was introduced, that was a time I really wanted this, I needed it, I used it. So that was a time for me it made sense to um, consider starting early with the better release. Right? because otherwise I couldn't do certain uh, features. If there's something like this, uh, think about it. Otherwise, the safe solution is, of course, wait for the final release. Now, if you have decided to uh, test a new version, how do you do this without screwing up your current uh, work environment, your current productive use? Um, this can be a little bit tricky. Um, one approach can be a second computer, a second laptop, if you have one available. Um, of course, many of us won't have that. And even if you do, if the specs are completely outdated or completely different, um, the question is how much does that test still uh, say to you? On one computer, you may have a dual boot option. So if you have installed, for example, Mac and Windows in parallel or uh, Windows and Linux, um, then uh, if you can go to another operating system via dual boot, then you can of course have another completely independent installation, which is not uh, interfering in any way. Um, there are also tricks to get uh, dual boot of the same operating system, usually via an additional hard drive or additional hard drive partition and um, some uh, additional technical details. I won't go into this, but if you have something like this or know how to set this up, uh, this can be a good opportunity to, to test on your actual machine, um, even if it's not the actual OS, um, but I guess that's as close as you can get to have completely separate installations. Now, in the past, I have often seen recommendations about how you can install uh, DaVinci Resolve separately on the same operating system. So in Windows, at least, I have tested that in the past and it was working. Uh, the trick is always to rename the installation folder of DaVinci Resolve. So go into your program folder, rename the installation uh, of DaVinci Resolve, and then the next time you run the setup process, it won't find it and will create a separate Resolve installation. Um, sounds good in theory, but keep in mind that this is a hack 
and not a Blackmagic Design recommended installation, right? So first of all, the two installations will not be able to share a database. So you need to keep databases completely separate for both installations. Um, but even more importantly, um, there could be any dependencies with third party or additional areas like user data and other stuff that your installation process touches um, and nobody will um, certify that this will uh, go correctly in all cases. So yes, it has worked in the past, it might work again, uh, but probably you don't want to try this on a computer which you use for generating revenue, right? All right, so these are my thoughts, opinions, experiences about Resolve upgrades. Um, other people may have slightly different uh, experience or ideas about it. Feel free to share in the comments if you want to add anything or if you want to share your own uh, thoughts on this. I'd be happy to hear about it. And otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.